Welcome to France 2022, the campaign. It is our daily show covering the presidential election here in France. 16 days to go before round one. And on the menu this Friday, a far-right candidate ventures into Paris's Crack Hill. The conservative hopeful is uh, forced to campaign from home because of COVID, while a communist contender is very interested in the martial arts fight in Dubai. Here's the recap of the day with Shirley Sitbon. He wanted to make some noise and may have gotten more than he expected. Two weeks ahead of the first round of voting, Eric Zemmour tried to jumpstart his campaign by visiting Paris's infamous crack hill. Zemmour said the solution is easy. While Zemmour's campaign loses steam, Marine Le Pen and her allies try to scoop his potential voters. On peut défendre des idées qui sont assez proches, partager des diagnostics, notamment sur la sécurité et l'immigration, qui sont assez proches avec l'un comme avec l'autre. By saying theirs, Jordan Bardella is also referring to Valérie Pécresse, the conservative candidate. Her campaign never really took off. Parce que Valérie Pécresse nous entend, elle entend pas. And now she contracted COVID. Je m'entends en écho dans votre dans mon oreille et votre caméraman est en train de téléphoner. Donc c'est très très compliqué pour faire l'interview pour moi ce soir. Pécresse campaigned on bringing back order, reinstating severe sentences for offenders and criminals. She's strictly opposed to legalizing cannabis, unlike Jean Lassalle. De toute façon, autorisée ou pas, elle pousse. <rire> je peux vous le dire. Moi, je serais pour qu'elle <coughs> soit vendue par l'État et peut-être par les bureaux de tabac qui se plaignent dans le plus avoir de travail de manière très, très encadrée. We'll end this roundup with some punches, but not between candidates. Fabien Roussel tweeted that his stepson, an MMA champion, is due to fight in Abu Dhabi. Good luck to him. That's all from today's campaign trail. Let's now take a look at their standing in the polls with this survey by IFAP from this Friday. Yes, uh, so uh, the polls have been uh, pretty uh, consistent. Uh, Emmanuel uh, Macron is well ahead of the pack, 28%. Uh, he's followed now uh, by Marine Le Pen, who's really reached that 20% uh, threshold. She had been around 15%, 16%. Uh, now she's at uh, 20%, and so she is uh, in the driving seat uh, for uh, qualification in round two. You only have two candidates qualifying for the second round. Uh, the far-left candidate, Jean-Luc Mélenchon, 14 percent. He's been on the rise, but now uh, he seems to have a problem uh, getting uh, to the level of uh, Marine Le Pen. Uh, the conservative candidate Valérie Pécresse still around 11.5 percent, uh, while the, the other far-right candidate uh, Éric Zemmour has been sliding. He's now at 11 percent, which may also explain why Marine Le Pen is rising. So that's the first round, Mark. What happens in the second round? What happens in the second round is that Emmanuel Macron would uh, win 53.5% uh, uh, versus 46.5% uh, uh, against Marine Le Pen. It's interesting because the race, according to this poll, is tightening. If we look back at a few weeks ago, uh, like let's say two months ago, uh, the differential was much bigger. Uh, Emmanuel Macron was at 58, Marine Le Pen was at 40, 42. Now uh, we're getting uh, less than 10 percent points difference between both of them. It's not within the margin of error, but clearly uh, Marine Le Pen, uh, who was seen as uh, really struggling just a few weeks ago, is back in the race and is clearly angling at a rematch with Emmanuel Macron. Uh, this was indeed the face-off in 2017. Indeed, like a flashback. Uh, we, it's time now to welcome our campaign commentator, Angela Diffley. Good to see you, Angela. Hi. Angela, uh, we're going to take a look at the youth vote uh, tonight. It's always uh, a mystery in, in one way uh, for elections. All the candidates are uh, seeking to get uh, this 18-24 uh, age group uh, to vote and especially uh, get them to the ballot box already. Uh, so how is it looking like in terms of turnout of the youth? Well, uh, 
the abstention worry uh, applies to every age group, actually. And there is a, a real worry that because, as we were saying yesterday, this campaign hasn't really ignited, that that will drive the abstention rates up. Uh, that said, the youth vote is notorious for not turning out. Uh, they move around a lot, and despite numerous campaigns to try to get them to sign up and vote and to make it easy for them, there is always a bit of a problem with youth abstention. In 2017, we can see it was at 68%. That is set to go down by 10 points, 10 percentage points. So about 58% of that age group look set to vote. So a worrying trend there. As to who they will vote for, that's not very different uh, from uh, the scores of candidates for the wider population. Uh, we can see that Macron much the same. The, the main difference there is uh, Jean-Luc Mélenchon, who has a higher score than he does in the wider population. That's not too surprising. Young people tend to be left-wing. Uh, Marine Le Pen scores slightly higher. Now, she's probably sucking up some of those low-income votes as well because of the two far-right candidates, she tends to attract low-income voters. And we all know that young people don't have that much money. What is surprising is 7% for Eric Semour, uh, very low there, far-right candidate, not surprising, but it's a lot lower than for the wider population. A lot of older people are attracted to uh, Eric Semour, and the young people most certainly are not. And Valérie Pécresse on a very low score, even though she herself has youngsters in this age group, but she seems to be failing to attract them. And what do young people care about? What is on their mind? What's stopping their, their mind as they go to the ballot box? Uh, well, the survey asked them what uh, mattered a lot to them. And for 63% of people, what mattered a lot to them was the cost of living. That's not surprising. Again, that is the top priority for every demographic in this campaign. And of course, young people don't have a lot of money. After that, uh, uh, employment. Uh, that's perhaps a bit surprising. Uh, Emmanuel Macron has done relatively well in boosting jobs, particularly in the private sector. But it may be a, a way of saying we hope that will continue or it should be a lot better. And law and order, that is a priority again in the wider population. Mm -hmm. Young people are out on the streets more. They're perhaps more victims of crime. And again, they tend to live in low cost housing, low cost areas where they might be victims of crime again. So uh, similar to the wider population there. What is surprising? It's not on our, our chart, but Ukraine, which is right at the top of the list of priorities for the wider population, was the question was framed as in international affairs for this demographic, the 18 to 24s, and it scored quite a, a low percentage point, 27%. Immigration, 31 Again, not that surprising that young people find that uh, less of a, a preoccupation. So those are the broad trends to be watching. And of course, as we all know, they're getting their information, they're getting their news broadly from social media, much less from the printed press, much less from newspapers and television. That's a trend worldwide and looks set to continue. Indeed. Now, in the run-up to the presidential vote, we're going to be taking the pulse of the country. France 24 journalists Julie Dungelhoff and Florence Vilmino have been crisscrossing France, meeting voters to understand their daily lives, the concerns, and as you'll see, the ideas for the future of the country. Yes, and uh, this week we're heading, well, to central uh, France to meet with Patrick Hervier. Patrick Hervier is a tailor who specializes in clothes 100% made in France. The Herbier family first got into the tailoring business in 1910. It was very artisanal at the time. People went to the seamstress or to the tailor to have their clothes made. My daughter will be the fifth generation of tailors in the Herbier family. You can't do this job if you're not passionate about it. It's a trade that'll eat you up. It's very stressful. My wife and I took over the family business in October of 1988. We went through some really tough times. Globalization, the 35-hour working week in the year 2000. A lot of companies had to shut down. My name is Marie-Jeanne and I've been working for the company since 1988. The job has completely changed. We used to have big orders. Now it's more on a case-by-case -case basis. 
2012, Made in France made a big comeback. That's thanks to the emergence of new brands run by young business owners who were concerned about the country. And then there's the environmental aspect. People have become aware that their clothes are made 20,000 kilometres away by children in terrible conditions. Today, the biggest problem in our profession is hiring people. Our priority is to hire people locally, but it's really hard. So we've started hiring refugees from places like Syria or Afghanistan. Integration in France can only happen through employment and housing. If I were president, my first act would be about education and training. Young people leaving the public education system need to find jobs and not just collect unemployment benefits. My second measure would be about valuing work. People who work need to earn more than those who don't. Now we're finishing up on a lighter note, Mark. Yes, uh, this has been indeed a very, very peculiar uh, campaign. Uh, the president slash candidates spends his time either on the phone or face to face with world leaders. This week in Brussels for a triple summit, NATO, G7 and EU, as you can see on this picture. As a result, while his campaign slogan is Emmanuel Macron avec vous, which means Emmanuel Macron with you, he's actually sending his underlings in his stead to campaign rallies. Here is a picture of his former Prime Minister, Edouard Philippe, this week campaigning in Nice on the French Riviera. And national rally leader Marine Le Pen is loving it. She even has a poster that we can see on this picture at a presentation in Paris. On the left side of the picture, there's Emmanuel Macron. You can read uh, without him. And on the other uh, side of the picture is uh, Le Pen with the words avec Marine with Marine. Pretty, pretty witty, pretty Better smart. <laughs> Thank you very much for that, Mark. And that's it for this edition of France 2022, the campaign. Join us Monday, 8.15 p.m. Paris time here on France 24 for the next episode.